Okay. Um, hope all of you are having a good week. I know the mic is kind of echoing, but I think it's uh, better. Um, one of the things that um, you need to know is the world is not getting better. And some of you are parents, so I have two little ones too. I'm past the little one stage, but they're still little to me. Uh, they're not even in elementary yet, just about to go to elementary. The oldest, the youngest, is just beginning to talk, and it's difficult. But in this world that we live in, uh, it's not the problem of police in America, or Black Lives Matter, and everybody keeps saying, all lives matter. Yes, all lives matter. And then some people say, animals' lives matter. I'm like, oh, it's just getting worse and worse. And so if you really understand, it's not about Korea, it's not about Muslims or Jewish. Uh, yes, we can blame the three organizations, the New Age, the Freemasons, and the Jewish people are controlling all the finances, all the conspiracy theories, the Rothschilds, uh, the Clintons, all the... Even the courts are not able to control anything. The judges. So everybody's blaming on top. Why? Is it the soldier's fault? Nope. Is it the commander-in-chief's fault? Nope. <laughs> Whose fault is it? If you really know the Bible, all the answers are there. And so it's not a matter of, it's my mom's fault. Or it's... If you really nitpick at it, very easily, whose fault is it? It's our fault. The church. Why? We don't know how to pray. Really don't know how to pray. If you really know how to pray, then you really receive correct answers to save lives. Right? Now, if you look very carefully in God's Word, everybody, really by God's grace, met God like Abraham. Then, you can see throughout his life, he was praying wrong, but what happened? God kept changing his prayer to be connected to his gospel, his desire, which is what? To save the world. Then, everything changed. Now, I'm going to tell you something because, um, like, um, thank you for praying for me. Um, I have a disease. This disease, very simply, is 1% of the world can get it. Usually fat people, and I guess I'm obese. <laughs> but anybody, no nationality is restricted. But um, you just get, it's like an acne. I'm going to explain it very grossly, so I'm sorry. It's like an acne that grows. But instead of growing out, it grows in. And you pop it, or you have surgery. Then it funnels to another place. And like, it like, it's like a, a mole going around your body, just finding a new place to come out. And no matter what, you got to keep on cutting it and taking drugs. And there's no cure. And there's some very uh, unsevere ones and very severe ones. I got the severe one because I'm unique. <laughs> so I got 1% of it that the world population get, and I got a severe version. And I got sick and tired of getting surgery, so I just left it alone. Just lived in pain for about a year. But it grew too big, and it changes to a cancer. So the doctor, went to, I went to exam, the doctor says, surgery now. I'm like, I just get, came to get a checkup, surgery now. So he just ripped a lot of chunk of infection out of me and he showed it to me, look how big it is. I'm like, oh, it's a golf-sized ball. <laughs> so, nice. Well, I was, it just half of my body is in anesthesia. But uh, that day that I had surgery, I thought, God, what's your plan? Am I not supposed to grab your word and pray? Get, guess what day that was that I had surgery, the weekend? Buddha's birthday. If you know Korea, Buddha's birthday is the worst day to get surgery. Why? If you're a Christian. And I don't, I'm not a rich pastor, so I don't get a single room. So of course we just get a regular room full of other people. And what channel do they turn on? The Buddhist channel. All night long, without turning it off. So, can I pray? I could, but not in my state. I'm thinking, God, what's your plan? Why did you allow me to go through all this and I'm getting worse and worse spiritually? What? Am I not here to save you know, the lives of these people that are around me? All of them, they don't care. All they care is about Buddha's birthday. 
right? Duk, 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 duk. And then some of it is nice, nice chanting or whatever, but wow, nothing. And I was there for three days, like in the hospital, until uh, they let me go so I could rest at home. It's, but it's very difficult to pray. Even as a pastor, we have a hard time to pray. Then, if I imagine pastors having a hard time to pray, what about you? Right? Who's underneath me? And I thought, I'm sorry, God. But if you really know how to pray, it's because of this one reason. You really, a little bit, just a little bit, accepted Jesus Christ and God's Spirit. Just a little bit went in. But there's no such thing as just a little bit. If you accept the Christ very correctly, just a little bit, very correctly, just a little bit. Even if you apply, you know, like the um, people in Exodus in Egypt, they applied the blood just a little bit because they were poor. The blood of the Lamb and the Passover. Death passed over completely. Everybody in that house, they were safe. Why? God will take complete responsibility if you apply the blood of the Lamb. That means no matter what country, what language, what age, how great of your status, background, if you're a soldier, if you're not a soldier, if you're a woman, if you're a child, anybody, even if little babies, even if they didn't know they were inside the blood, death passed over. No more disaster. Suddenly they changed from slavery to what? Being under God, a child of God. This is Old Testament. You're not supposed to be a child of God. Plus, they didn't understand it. That's what they suffered too. Because they didn't believe and understand this gospel. Then, very carefully understand this. Why do we need to pray? Because the second greatest blessing after salvation, if you accept Jesus Christ, Jesus, that's his name. Christ is his work. If you really understand that Jesus is the Christ, then what happens? Death passes over you. No more death. You cross over from death to life. John 5, 24. But if you receive him, believe in his name. Remember, we, today's passage is about until now you have not prayed. So, what have we been praying? You have not asked anything in my name. Then your joy will be complete. You'll be full. Full of what? Joy. That means this joy doesn't go away. It keeps adding more to it and it's eternal. Because, you know, the Bible says, if you are with Jesus and with God, there's eternal pleasures. But every time we think of pleasures, joy, we think very strangely in the worldly sense. That's all we suffer. Um, I'm going to tell you a mystery. I've been sick, so good thing I've been sick too, because bad things came out. My thinking was all weird. It's like all the bad natures of my brooding and imprint just keeps coming out, which is good. But as I was been, uh, been sick, um, I've been thinking about, I've been listening to a lot of messages, thinking about a lot of messages, and praying, God, all this time that I have now, what do you want me to do and learn? So I've been um, seeing movies that I've never saw, seen before. Um, I've been reading a lot more. Um, not so much researching, just reading because, you know, and finding the gospel more for myself too. So if you ever need any materials, uh, suddenly I found myself researching any and everything. But um, there's a book that I'm researching now, and it's called The Satanic Bible. You know, you've got to know about the Satanists, right? You know, and they're not bad people. But let me quote you what they have. This is The Satanic Bible. And I know these people a little bit. I don't know them. I know some of them personally uh, from before. But this is from the head. The guy that wrote the Satanic Bible, he, in the beginning, wrote nine statements that they all believe. Now listen to this, because this is what you need to understand is the world, and it's what's inside of you, because it's being influenced by you. Think about it, okay? Don't, if, if I deleted one word, you would never know it's satan Satanic. But these are the nine Satanic statements. Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. Right? Okay, that's number one. Number two, Satan represents vital existence. That means oh, you're existing and you're lively and you're just existing, right? Instead of spiritual pipe dreams. That means, you know, fakes. Number three, Satan represents undefiled wisdom. 
instead of hypocritical self-deceit. All the lies and fakes, right? Again. Number four, Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. You know, people that don't deserve it, the bad ones. Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. So it pretty much covers a lot, right? Number six, Satan represents responsibility to those, to those that are responsible, to the responsible, instead of concern for psychic vampires. Of course, the book exp explains about vampires too, which is kind of funny. Number seven, Satan represents man as just another animal, sometimes better, more often worse than those that walk on all fours, who because of his divine spiritual and intellectual development has become the most vicious animal of all. That means if you're not following according to the ways of satanic things, you don't, you're worse, you're a vicious animal. You're worse than animals. Um, number eight, Satan represents all of the so-called sins as they lead to physical, mental, or emotional gratification. That means their definition of sin is not our definition of sin. That means as long as you satisfy what's empty inside of you, it's okay. Number nine, Satan has been the best friend the church has ever had as he has kept it in business all these years. You can actually download this very easily, which is very scary. Anybody, and plus, there's a lot of people teaching this to little kids. Why? These people are not like, you know, what we think of, the demons. They're nice people. But what are they centered on? They're centered on themselves. You yourself are God. See them, you can sell your soul to Him. He will fulfill your desires. That's pretty much it. And it doesn't look, it sounds like a good deal. And there's magic to it. There's prayers, there's worship. And we think that you know there's sacrifice of babies and so forth and virgins, or whatever. But then one part I was reading, what about satanic sex? This is what it says. If you is they all think of orgies, right? You know, it's crazy things. I know it's terrible to hear this, but sorry. But and children are here too. But think about this. They say this. If you love a woman and you want to stay with a woman, okay. That's very satanic way too. If you like to love other people more or even other sexes, fine. Whatever goes, as long as what? You don't hurt, hurt and kill other people. They're very nice people. That's why they're, they're pretty much promoting we're nice people, but who's the center? Yourself. What's the center? Physical, material, gratification. As long as you succeed. Didn't we hear this message before? Genesis 3, 6, and 11? Where we all felt, hey, you don't need God. You yourself can be God, right? You don't need God. You're not going to die. You need to eat this fruit. A knowledge of good and evil. Because why? You'll be just like God. You will not die. Guess what happened? Spiritual death, physical death, eternal death. Hey! We can be great giants. We can own it all. You have the physical power. You can do it all. I was in the base, Yongsan base. I'm kind of scared of Yongsan base because when I go there, I'm not that big anymore. In Korea, I'm pretty big. But when you go to Yongsan base, I'm just average. I'm not even fat. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, out of shape, but kind of on the, not, you know, too fat side, just kind of like, you know, he has potential. <laughs> But when I go there, I was looking at a guy, and he's just a teenager. He's bigger than me. I was like, wow. And I would go inside with Deacon Jacob. Deacon Jacob, he's a dwarf in the base. I'm sorry, but he's really small. But everybody's huge. It's like we're in the land of giants. And it's scary because why? They seem like the culture of America is so much greater because they create these giants. And so, the world loves America, and yet hates it too. It's a love-hate relationship, because they have everything, but yet there's something missing. 
And that's the age of Nephilim. Everything has fallen. You can do everything, but there's nothing to gain. So it's not about size matters. It's not about physical things. Or some people say this, hey, what's your status in your life? What kind of position, what achievements have you done? That's the Tower of Babel. What name have you made for yourself? Right? That's exactly what the message of America is. What school did you graduate? What did you do? Right? But that's not it. In America, a long time ago, uh, before I came to Korea to receive more training in the gospel, I was helping in Atlanta, my friend, um, do the ministry to the homeless. But there's this guy wearing a suit, and um, he's pretty tall. And I asked him, you know, why in the streets? What's your background? What's your story? And he was a professor. He had a PhD. He used to teach, but because of, you know, drugs and a lot of mistakes he made, he's totally ruined his own life. But he has a PhD. His family are still waiting for him, but he won't go back. He was so successful. But I know a lot of people, that's, their success is fake. So even if you succeed in this world, guess what? You can't win against Satan. If it's really real, if the Bible is really real, that's why we need only Christ. Christ means this, and you already know. He's Genesis 3.15. Main figure of that is Jesus Christ. He's the woman's offspring to destroy the work of the devil. That means every work of the devil is what to make you deny so there's things that you need to know the five d's the devil deceive mankind so they'll deny god we don't need god and then man and woman disobeyed disobeyed god's covenant god's word to be with him and then what came in death came in so what is this world in what is the work of the devil death that's why John 10.10 10 says this very well. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And yet, most people pray for what? God, me, myself, and I. Physical things, success. Everybody. The Satanists pray this way. Every religion prays this way. But especially the Christians are praying this way. God, world peace. There is no peace in this world. Like, people think that police officers are the problem. It's not the problem. People think that black people are the problem. No way. People think that you know white, green, whatever color, you have lack of education. That's not the problem. The real problem is we have a thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And his name is Satan. He's the only enemy, adversary, and the only one that can take care of him. Like literally, abolish his power and take away the power of death is who? The woman's offspring. And who is he? 1 John 3, 8 says it very well. The reason why the Son of God came is to destroy the work of the devil. And the funny thing is this, if you read the Bible carefully, and I'll share it to you later, but one of the reasons why Jesus came is to take away Satan's power of what? He holds death in his hand. Everybody's scared. That's why we don't have to be scared of death. We don't have to be scared of life. Why? As soon as you accept Jesus Christ, that blessing of Satan, his authority, crumbling. He's afraid of you now. There's only one relationship. Before, it was John 8.44, right? Your father the devil. That's why we lie. That's why, you know, he's a murderer. He's a father of lies and we're just always tagging along and just following him. But now, John 1 12 for those that received and believe in his name he gave the right to become children of God that's how we pray and we cry out Abba Father why? because Jesus Christ gave us that blessing of being adopted as sons and daughters of God then how do you pray? of course in Jesus name but how do we call God? our Father we all have physical fathers my father um, I love him but he really didn't raise me very well. Actually, he didn't raise, I don't remember him raising me. My Korean is not there. Uh, he never played ball. I'm very late bloomer in sports. Although 
I don't think you should knock me down in any sports. I taught uh, and coached volleyball, so I'm okay in some sports, but I'm a very late bloomer. I'm a late bloomer in almost every area of my life. Scholarly, I'm not very scholarly, but still, I have the highest degree in my family, but still, nothing to boast. I, I got a life course certificate once, that's pretty hard, but I think anybody can get it. Uh, you know, I've done missions that smuggled Bible and money to, you know, the underground church in China. I was like, wow, like clo cloak and dagger stuff. But that's nothing. But you need to know this. One of the greatest things about me understanding the gospel is being able to forgive my dad. Why? All I want to be a, was American. Why? I hated Koreans. If Koreans raised their children this way, all I was thinking, the American dream. Look at that. Look, the American family, they look so happy. <laughs> the dad is playing with his child's son. I'm going to be like that to my children. Guess what? I'm not even doing that. <laughs> I'm just like my dad too. It's like, oh. uh, that's what happens. But then, you know who solved it all? Christ. Christ is the reason why my dad has a father and he gets restored. Christ is the reason why I get a heavenly father and everything's okay. He takes care of me. What happened if I don't have a scholarship or money? Don't worry. Later on, I'll tell you about the Lord's Prayer. But you know when we say, give us today our daily bread? You know, there's another actually word for that daily. It's not today. It's actually tomorrow also included. That daily is included tomorrow. That means, stop worrying about physical things. That's the only physical prayer in the Lord's Prayer. Don't worry about physical things. Your Father will take care of it. But we worry about the physical thing first. But that's what we pray incorrectly. One of the things that you need to know this, but what about my thinking that's all messed up in disbelief, my curses and sin? my disasters in my life, my problems. That's why the second gospel that God gave us in His Word is very simple. Exodus 3, 18. Give the blood sacrifice. You worry about death. And you fear about things. You fear about economy. Especially you guys are doing, um, like, you know, a lot of the stocks and finances. You hate Britex. Brick Br 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 6, whatever. The British exiting. Everybody, if you did any finances, Wow, because of what they did, all the finances crumbled for a short while. I think it's going to rebound too, but they hate it. Guess what? It's not a problem. Why do we fear? Because we have faith in money more than God, right? We have faith in education more than God. That's why God says this, hey, apply the blood of the Lamb. You're stuck in slavery, captivity, colonization. Don't worry. Don't worry, you're stuck. Like my wife, she's always tired because of my children. You're stuck with children. Don't worry, you're not stuck. You're blessed. Why? Apply the blood inside of your family, inside of your work, inside of every relationship, inside of your study. Apply it, and guess what? Death will pass over you. That means my finances is crumbling. Apply the blood. Death will pass over you. All the curses will be gone. Your wrong thinking will be gone. That's why. Why did Jesus come? He came not to be served, but to serve you. That means He came to ransom you. And He came so that you may have life. The spirit of life set you free from all what? The law of sin and death. That means you're not stuck in being. You know what sin actually means? Separated from God, missing the mark. You're not in the, you're like, I'm trying so hard, but it's not working. You're not supposed to be there. That's why Pastor Yu, my head pastor, always says this. Most people pray for their you know, work and study. No, don't pray for that. As you're receiving the filling of the Holy Spirit, as you're praying, work. As you're studying, right? Pray. But that means continuously, not because... Oh, my study's not going well, you pray. Don't do that. God gave us the greatest blessing. One thing I'm learning right now, um, because it's important for me to know that I have life, 
this life is greater than any disease, any problem. Although sometimes it's hard to believe. <laughs> but one thing that God gave us, and I realized because I'm studying this, about breathing. Breathing? Wow. You know that we breathe wrong? Because I'm breathing right now, and I don't sleep very much again. I, although I need to rest, but it's hard to rest because it's hot too, and plus, you know, I have kids, and, you know, I sleep late. But then I sleep less now, but and I thought this was actually not going to work. But if you do deep breathing before you sleep, you stay awake. But I'm doing deep breathing before I sleep. To do what? And I, I don't sleep very fast because I do that because I get more energy. But the reason why I have to do it is because I can't do it standing up. So I have to lie down. So, but you know what my pastors told me? And it's in books too. Our breathing is usually just up here. We don't do it deeply. You know what deeply is? Some of you guys that exercise a lot, you guys are doing... Uh, breathing, but most of us were breathing too fast and incorrectly. Like babies, you all see the babies. Moms know this very well. How do the babies breathe? Their bellies go up and down. But guys and girls, especially, you know, Pastor Brett will not like his belly to go up and down. Why? He's going to get married soon. He has to get skinny and all nice looking. Why? But once you get married, you don't care. <laughs> you just let it loose. <laughs> but, but, this is good. For us that get married, we just gotta let it loose. But you have to find out. And I thought, oh man, oh, yeah, I'm gonna look fatter if I keep doing deep breathing because you know, you're supposed to expand and exercise your diaphragm. Underneath your lung is a diaphragm. It holds it, holds it up. It's the midsection, the core. But you're supposed to let it go up and down. It's super hard to contract it. And the only way to do it is not sit-ups. It's by breathing. And you know how I breathe? This is kind of weird. I think, because my pastor told me to do this. He says, I, for every minute, very comfortably, he breathes four times only. That means 15 second cycles. Breathe in, breathe out, right? 15 seconds. Then I tried it. And then this is what happened. I'm sorry, I have to talk about breathing, but this is part of the message because it's part of the Word of God. Our breath is tied to the Word of God, tied to the Spirit of God, right? And then Psalm 150, that everything that has breath, praise the Lord, right? There are tons of passages about breathing. God breathed upon them. And Jesus even breathed upon them too. So that means our breath is connected to the gospel. So, as I was breathing, guess what? How much am I really breathing correctly? It's easy to understand. When I started uh, breathe, deep breathing, I couldn't do it. Because it's hard to hold it for that long. It's like pain. But once I got over that little you know, hill. Now, it's a little bit easier, and even though I'm sick a little bit, my throat and so forth, your immune system kicks in a little bit faster. Your brain gets brighter. You know why? Because oxygen is going correctly, and you're expelling things out faster and better. But you need to do that. That's how God created us. Babies, they don't know any better because they're born the way God created them, so they breathe through their stomach. That's normal. We don't do that anymore. That means, where are we imprinted? Inside of the curse of Genesis 3. Inside of all the curse of Genesis 6 and 11. All oh, material things, physical things, the way we look. As long as we look good, the inside is all dying then. Spiritually, we're all dying. Money will solve everything? No. I went to Yongsan, and one of the older gentlemen has come to our uh, Bible study. He said this, other Bible studies, we learn about the passage and the background, but then we're going through the gospel, but she doesn't know how to share anything. You know why? This is the first time I ever heard this. I've never heard this gospel, and he's been a Christian most of his life. I'm like, ah, oh, it's a very sad state then. They do not know the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb makes you come alive. That means, how much do you know this blood? And how much is it flowing in you? Right? How much are you enjoying that? That it's over. That you're no longer dead. You're no longer cursed. You're free. Are you thinking that way? Right? Then that means you don't have to worry. Why? Life is in you. Why? The spirit of life. You no longer have to live in the flesh. You have to live in the spirit. 
Romans 8 says a lot, Romans 8, 1 to 11. But let me read a passage here, about, uh, verse 13 on the latter part. Because verse 2 says it all. Jesus Christ, the spirit of life, set you free from, in Christ Jesus, set you free from the law of sin and death. Then, verse 13, in the latter part, look at this. Put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. You know what the deeds of the body is? Everything that's contrary to the gospel. And it's not mean you shouldn't go and eat food and you know exercise. It's not that. The deeds of the body, what you do, what you think, it will give you life. That's what the passage is all about. It says this, verse 7, 14, 17. For all who were led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And for you did not receive the spirit of slavery, right? Because we were slaves before. To fall back into fear. How were we living in the flesh, in this world? You're scared, right? Most of you are scared about the future, worried about the future. Most of you are scared of death, your loved ones dying, right? The world getting worse and worse. It's fear. Then look at this. But you have received the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of, the, as, of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. That's how we pray. Dad, you know everything. Father, you know everything. Then, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Then that means you have to confirm, are we really in Christ? Then we're free from Satan and curses. Then look at this. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. And this is important, these heirs. That means you received all the blessings, all the rights, all the authority and power in Christ too. Because you're heir with Christ. You have received things from God. Everything in Christ. Then, provided we suffer with Him in order that we may be, also be glorified with Him. And that's where we get stuff. We don't want to suffer. But you know what the suffering is? Guess what? You ever seen water and oil? Do they mix? Do you know why we suffer? Because the world can't understand. Do you know why the world is not going to like us? Because we're what? The opposite of them. We're alive and they're thinking they're alive and they're ignorant about life. They're ignorant about God's word. That's why there's no choice but to be persecuted. But they don't know better. For why? Because who's the ruler of the world? Satan. So, but why are Christians doing? They're not suffering. They're actually joining hand in hand with the world. Right? That's why God can't use us. Because why? We still live in this world, in the body, in the flesh. We still are under the world. That's why it's impossible to receive any of the blessing of the kingdom of God. Even though it's ours. That's why God says this. What is prayer? Right? So if our mind is still in this flesh, in this world, in this worldly things, guess what? What does it mean? Death. Right? Do everything possible. Be the best shooter, be the best money maker, be the best healthiest person. Guess what? In the end? Death. Be the best teacher. Make the most money. Come on. Really, try it. Death. That's what the Bible says. Enjoy your life to the fullest. All the women, all the guys, right? Get as much surgery as possible. Still, death. I knew a person, um, and I see, see that person. She used to be very, very pretty when she was about a couple of years back, about four or five. And then she got more tattoos. She's a celebrity. But then she got plastic surgery. Wow, and she's still young, but she looks like, you know, in Korean term, Ajima. Like really bad at Jima looking, scary. But her face in the beginning was like an angel. But suddenly she became like, you know, scary. You don't want to mess with her. But that's what happens. Death is at work. But if our mind is with God's Holy Spirit in Christ, then life and peace. That's where our prayer is. That's why the last thing is this. What is the only sign that God will give you? God will not give you any other answers. He only will give you one thing. Isaiah 7, 14. Oh, but I have problems, God. Everything is going into disasters. 
I'm going to give you a sign. The virgin will conceive a son. His name is Emmanuel. That means all the answer is where? God is with you. That's why John 14, 6 says this. I am the way. How do you live? Jesus is the way. All the things that you hear from your boss to your wife to your husband to your children to all your friends, what's the truth? Because the world is where? Under Satan. I am the way, the truth that will set you free, right? And death is at work in this world, right? In every area of the world, in every aspect, culture, right? relationships, what is the answer? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Why? No one comes to the Father except through me. That means it's only Christ. One of the greatest blessings that I received is understanding this gospel more and more in Korea. And some of you know my testimony. If I had a choice, I will not be here. Right? But God needed to heal me. So where did will he send for me to receive healing? Korea. And how does he heal me? Not through Koreans. Through the gospel. God, my prayer was world transition. Some of you know this. I'm a person that um, shouldn't be able to do world transition. I could try as much as I can, and I'm not boast about it, but I can't. But God attaches this church, and our church, we bring everybody in, and we lack a lot. But God's greatest blessing is this we run together. Japanese, Chinese, <laughs> we even had Mongolian lay person. He even helped me, I helped him. We help each other. Why? It's the same flow of the gospel. That means there's life and power only in Jesus. And when it's only Jesus, what comes? Our greatest calling and commission, only the kingdom of God. But we're lacking power. What brings us all together? Only the Holy Spirit. Like I know many soldiers have a lot of scars. They saw death. A lot of the wives don't understand. But here's something that you need to understand. Soldiers are the greatest, greatest blessing. Why? If they're soldiers in Christ. Mothers, they have the greatest blessings if they're in Christ. Children, no matter what kind of, you know, age they're in and how spunky or less spunky or crazy they are, you know how they're blessed? Because I have children if they're in Christ. What happens if you have relationship problems with non-believers or you have a bad past? Everything changes if you're in Christ. How do you pray? Very simply. Like Jesus prayed, Our Father who is in heaven. Matthew 6 says that, right? Who is your name? That means there's no one like Him. He's different. So we pray not to religion. We pray to a Holy Father. And his name is different from any other name. Why? His name is connected to what? The Father's name is connected to his Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Then, it's different, right, from any religion. May your kingdom come, your will be done. That's how we pray. Guess what? Give us this day our daily bread, right? That means take care of our needs, even for tomorrow. Help us not to worry about it. And what about temptations? He will always provide a way out. What about the evil one? He will protect us, deliver us. He will actually give us victory to conquer. Why? In Christ is our status and authority. That's why, how do we pray? We pray only in Christ. Not, that's why he says, until now you have not asked anything in my name. We've been pray Other prayers. If you're a God, child of God, He hears you. He will answer you also. How? No. Wait. Or sometimes right away, yes. But you know what He's waiting for? For you to pray in Christ, in the gospel. Then what? It's an eternal answer. Continuously. 24, 25, eternity, right? Last thing that you need to know. What is the true Lord's Prayer? Let me read it for you. It's John 17 before the cross. 
John 17 is the real Lord's Prayer before the cross. Jesus is at the Garden of Gethsemane. And Gethsemane means this, it's the pressing of oil. It's the greatest pressure for Jesus because he doesn't want to die. He doesn't want to take on the sin of all the world. He doesn't want to be separated from God for a short moment. But this is the reason why he came on earth, to die for us. So he says, not my will, but yours, Father. Right? But look at this. Of course, John 17, 3, it says here, let me read, and this is eternal life because we all want to enjoy eternal life, right? But it starts now here. This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. All right? And then he goes on. Um, verse, verse 6. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave to me. And then he goes on and on. But then it says, I'm not praying for them, like, you know, so I'll protect them, save them, or whatever. He just says, I will give them my name. Right? And they are yours. So help them to become one with you and me. That means, how do we pray? When you pray, you're one with God, before God. And how do we pray? Inside of God's greatest desire. Because He saved you, but why are you on earth? We have fathers, mothers. Yes, your greatest mission is to raise your children well. But your children? Soldiers are very funny to train. You know why? First thing is first. They need to follow command. That's why there's boot camp. Of course, they need to shoot guns really well too. But one thing is this. They need to know who the enemy is. Why are we here? Because there's an enemy. And the rest of the world are under him. And they don't know. So what are we here for? So that that name can set them free. The name of who? Christ Jesus. How do we pray? How do we find our prayer? God has given you salvation in Christ. Acts 1.1 Only Christ, God is with you again. Acts 1.3 God has given you the kingdom of God. Not when you die, but here and now. So you can establish it no matter how bad your co-workers are. You can establish the kingdom of God. That's where your talent is. God has given you answers ahead of time. How? Because the Holy Spirit is inside of you. So be filled with His Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8 What do you have to do? Acts 1.14 Concentrate and pray with Acts 1, 1, 3, and 8. Then what answers do you receive? Acts 2 and Acts never ends. It continues even now. To do what? To save the world. You will save every enemy except for Satan, okay? Satan is just un unsavable. You will save every enemy that you think is an enemy. Right? In this world, physically. You will save them. Because why? You pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Romans 5.8, I'll end with this. While we were yet sinners, while we were still God's enemy, God demonstrated His love for us by doing what? Sending Christ. Amen? And that's the name that we pray in. If you have any questions, ask Pastor Sam, Pastor Brett, myself. We'll help you grow in the gospel. And to pray. We have covenantal prayers, gospel prayers. You can enjoy that every day. But make it yours. Find your own prayer from God's Word. And once you accept Jesus Christ, it's over. Death is gone. Sin, curses, being separated from God, hell is gone. And everybody gets to be blessed by you. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that this world is under a terrible state, but yet you have saved us completely and perfectly. And now Christ is more than enough. Help us to truly know the name of only Christ so that our joy will be complete. Fill us with the knowledge and the blessing of the gospel and help us to truly enjoy uh, this, that this gospel um, is everything. It's all we need. And we need to just share that, enjoy that, uh, and relate that to all people. Help us to really be able to find our own prayer inside of the gospel every single day and enjoy that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.